recording. Okay. Good morning. We're so Good happy morning. to be We know that there are a lot of people will be joining us here in the next couple of minutes. So we're going to hang out a little bit and say hello. Um, good morning. I'm Patty. I'm Diane. And uh, we're going to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this mask thing will be a little loose. <laughs> and we're going to have a good time today. And we hear the doorbell ringing, so we know a lot of people are joining us. We're going to give them a couple of seconds to get their audio in. So now it's the time we have a second day to get a drink, help the patrons, um, get something to write with, grab your favorite book, uh, and uh, grab your bag that you got in the courier if you um, got in early enough and we got them out early enough. It looks like this. <laughs> Okay, we'll start in just about one minute. Sorry. All right. Okay. Hmm? Okay, you're about to play. Okay. Okay. Patty? Yes. This is Gail. I, oh, there's my video. Um, I just want to remind you that with a mask, it's difficult to understand. So don't get yourself in those higher octaves that only dogs can hear, please. <laughs> <laughs> and Amy from Great Ben just laughed at me uh, as soon as you said that, because I often say that about Amy. So I will probably switch to a different mask that I can um, speak through a little more clearly. So we'll do that in just a moment. But thanks for that reminder, Gail. Okay, it sounds like the doorbell has quit ringing, and it looks like we have quite a few uh, people visiting us today. So we are so glad we're here. Woohoo! That's great. So we're so glad you're here. So we're going to start with the official introduction and get going. So welcome to CK, the virtual version. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to have a good time today. And in the next 90 minutes, we're going to share with you a ton of really awesome ideas. We're going to give you some great books that are going to be added to your book list that you want to purchase for this summer or certainly have for later. Um, I am Patty Kahn. I am the Youth Services Consultant. I am Diane Bott. I'm Services Assistant. It's really hard to say that through this. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are ready for a whole summer full of tales and tales. We have lots of people helping us behind the scenes. Usually when you're here in Great Bend, you get to see all of the hard work that they're doing. Yes, I'm sorry to say that there are donuts, and I'm sorry that you are not here today, but there were donuts this morning. So <laughs> that, was a, that was a huge surprise and a nice break for Diane and I this morning to get started. But, and we want to make sure that we introduce all of our friends that are working from their desks here today. So we're going to start with our Mary Beth, and then we will move through our crowd. Can I get my hood on? Oh. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Schaefer, and I'm a dragon today with wings. And I am the assistant director and the con continuing education consultant. And today she's IT. And IT. And today she's also the workshop producer, director, and, and stage manager. And stage manager. So she's taking care of all the roles. Okay, I'm going to spotlight a staff member. When you see your face in the center of the screen, it's your time to go. So let's go with Liz. Hi, everybody. I'm Liz. And um, we had some animal names posted up in our elevator. So my animal name for today is Buddy the Energetic Parakeet. I handle the cataloging for the system and schools. All right, Missy. Hi everybody, I'm Missy Esfeld. I'm Acquisitions Manager for CKLS. I do the Ingram ordering and tech services process a lot of books. Joy. You're still muted, Joy. Hello, this is Joy. My name from the name generator was the cuddly cheetah, but I'm actually a leopard and not a cheetah <laughs> and sometimes not so cuddly. So I changed it to the not so cuddly leopard. <laughs> but welcome to everyone. Eat or lick. 
Hello, everybody. I'm Idirli Weber. I work uh, outreach department, I'm helping with cataloging with RB. Um, my name as um, animal, I guess, supposed to be fancy children, but I'm supposed to be a rabbit. <laughs> Enjoy. Run. <laughs> Can you see me? <laughs> Kinda. This is Ron from CKLS Rotating Books. And Catfish Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your filter has made your face the ocean. Can you see me? Um, your face is the ocean. <laughs> okay. It's camouflaged. Okay. Let's see. Who else can I see on here? There's so many people. Gail. Here we go. Gail. Hi, I'm Gail. I'm the director of the Central Kansas Library System in the Great Bend Public Library, and I have the great privilege of herding this bunch of cats. <laughs> Welcome. Well, let's see if I can find Kathy Rowan. Oh, let's do Michael. I think I can find Michael. There's Michael. Okay. Michael. Oh, yay. Hey, everybody. I'm Michael from the Central Kansas Library System. I do the, I'm the library technology manager. So I help with Pathfinder and Libraryware and the different library software. Um, today, I am an Arctic fox. <laughs> All right. Andy. Uh, I'm Andy Michener, uh, IT manager, Central Kansas Library System. All right, uh, Kathy, start talking so then I can find you. I'm right here. <laughs> can you find me? We lost you. Hello. There's so many people. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> it is a jungle. There we are. Hi, Kathy. Hello. I'm Kathy Ron, CKLS Talking Books Consultant and Interlibrary Loan. And my animal name today is Star the Clever Pony. But I have giraffe ears, no pony ears. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, Christy. Hi there, I'm Christy Snyder and I work with the School of Libraries. My minky here <laughs> is very happy to see all of you. And um, my name for today was Star the Strong-Minded Monkey. <laughs> Yes. That was good. That was good. Peggy. You're still muted, Peggy. Hi, I'm Peggy Manning. I'm assistant to the consultants and I answer the phone when you call in. And it's good to see you all here today. All right. And I don't know if they're on, but we also have Steve Coomer, who is in our business office. And Loretta Schrader, who also works at our business offices. And then we also have Fred and Russell, who are maintenance, and they keep us, well, they keep us clean, I guess is the way to say that. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see if I can, if you haven't been muted yet, please make sure you're muted. Thank you. All right. Now, we will go back to us. I just wanted to. I'm glad you got. I'm glad you got to meet all of the CKLS staff. And if they were, if you were here, you would see um, all of the craziness and the funniness going along. So, um, so Diane, yes, Patty, <laughs> she's making that face for I found this really cool book in the let's see, Adam Silly is from rotating called Tekel for jokes about classrooms and sports. Hey, Diane. Why was the jungle cat thrown out of school? I don't know. Why was the jungle cat thrown out of school? Because he was a cheetah. But that's funny. <laughs> Diane does not appreciate my jokes. <laughs> You'll get to hear some more in just a moment. So Diane and I are going to talk about our costumes. So We're having a little trouble understanding you, Patty. Could you change your mask? Um, I'm going to just right now. All right. Um, so the mask I'm wearing came from uh from amazon but we found something a little better at walmart it happens to be 
a dog mask. And it works very well to be a raccoon. My mask, my ears, my tail, and my mitts um, are part of an Amazon costume that we found for about $7 on Amazon. Dollar, oh, Dollar General. Dollar General, okay. Um, my shirt, um, I was looking for the right shirt and uh, I went to Goodwill and then I wore it to work and Gail said, hey, that used to be my shirt. It was that Goodwill. <laughs> so now it's my shirt to be a, a raccoon. And then I'm also wearing a, a shiny skirt with uh, uh, lots of crinolines. Lots of happy girl stuff. Happy girl stuff. <laughs> and uh, when I bought it, I was just looking for a tutu because I was just going to wear it with leggings and slippers. But I found a cute skirt. So that's going to stay in my closet because no doubt I'll use it for something else. Diane, would you like to talk about you? Um, same thing. The um, lion mane and the mask. My mask actually came from Walmart. Um, and there is a tail back right here. <laughs> and I'm just wearing my clothes. Ta -da, ta -da. So um, as we go through the day, no doubt we will leave some of the costume pieces behind. Um, I am back into my regular everyday mask that I use for Zoom meetings yes. and also for regular life. Um, I was kidding Diane about being the grouchy lion because the longer she sits there, her face tends to <laughs> deliver the grouchy face. I'm so. actually smiling <laughs> under here. You can't see it. But. So, uh, so um, keep in mind if you're looking for costume pieces for whatever summer library program workshop you're doing um, or whatever summer library um, activity or, or story time thing, um, start at your local Goodwill um, and then ask your patrons because somebody might have that main from the year that they played the Cowardly Lion and the Wizard of Oz that they're willing to loan you. So um, think bigger than going to the store because sometimes it's in your own backyard or in your boss's closet. So <laughs> sometimes you gotta, you gotta look other places. So um, I'm gonna get a little more comfortable so you can see um, the real us um, here. So yeah. Uh, I think I think Diane's probably not going to last very long with the with the no. main off. It's this. I am stuck. So, <laughs> so um, she'll feel a little better as, as ourselves here. So, and uh, we wanted to I'll share with better. you a um, a poem from a book called Boom Bellow Bleat Animal Poems for Two Voices, and this is by Georgia Hurd. And the poem that we're going to do. It's called, We Call to Each Other. This type of activity might be a perfect um, summer library program promo activity that you might be able to do for a school visit um, or something to uh, begin or end a summer library program. Is that enough? Okay, I'll be first, okay. We call to each other. We call to each other. Daylight is fading. Frost powders trees. Time to fly south for the winter. Following the flyway. Cling to the coastline. Honk, 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 honk. We call to each other. We call to each other. Daylight lingers. Balmy air breathes on buds. Time, Time to, to fly, fly north for spring. spring. Follow the melting snow line. Home to our nesting spots. Honk, 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 honk. An easy activity. One page out of a book, but the entire book is filled with poems for two voices. You're going to see a, a little more of this kind of activity here a little bit later on. So, Diane. You ready for another jump? Absolutely, Miss Patty. Because I got some really good ones in here. All right, Diane, what animal makes the best teacher? I don't know. What animal makes the best teacher? A skunk, because it has the most sense. <laughs> Every day. Every day I put up with this. Okay, well, just one more. Okay, all right. Why did the frog try out for the baseball team? Come on, come on, come on, you know this one. I know, but no, nope, I don't know today. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to catch pop flies. Pop flies. Ah, 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 ah. 
So we'll entertain you with more of that here in just a little bit. So, um, um, okay. Patty, we have a question about the book that you were just reading jokes out of. What was the name of it again? The name of it is called Chuckle Squad, and it is by Michael Dahl, D A H L. Thank you. And this item is one of the items that was um, recently um, uh, deleted from the rotating collection and will show up in one of your. And someone's box at some point to be added to someone's <laughs> library. So yes, we try to use what we have. All right, Mary Beth, can you pull up the PowerPoint? Of course. I am not a PowerPoint girl, um, but I'm using it to keep us on track a little bit today. Uh, some of the, the PowerPoint is one of the things that's available in the Google Drive. Uh, we have Michael is um, one of our chat watchers today and he will be sharing some information uh, for you in the chat. One of the things he will be sharing is the um, Google Drive that does contain this PowerPoint that has some details in it. Mary Beth, you can move us forward. Maybe. She's gonna try. So um, you saw the CKLS when they joined us, um, the staff all joined us as different animals. So this was the best depiction. I thought this might be a fun um, image that you might be able to steal. Um, that can hold uh, be a space holder if you happen to do a virtual program for the summer. And the next slide is the, the, the serious part of the day, but we need to start here. Um, the library in COVID-19, it has been a difficult year to say the least, but we've learned some things. Most important, you are doing enough. That's, that's, that's it. And your best is good enough. Your patrons do understand that this was not a normal year. Um, it's okay to be frightened uh, because we are. That's just a, a statement of fact. Um, we worry about ourselves um, in the public service area. We worry about our patrons. Um, the statistics will not be normal. Your 2020 stats won't be normal and neither will your 2021. We already know that two months in that this is not gonna look like 2019 or the years before or hopefully the years ahead. We discovered the virtual programming is not the same, but some of us embraced that and did that. Some of us dabbled in it a little bit, and some of us said, I'm not gonna go there, I can figure out something else. But most importantly, you found new ways to serve your patrons. Um, whether it be curbside delivery, whether it be taking stuff and dropping it on porches, whether it be take and makes, whether it be doing a video once a week to say, I'm still here and I miss you. Uh, frankly, some of your patients are afraid to visit, as they should be, because um, a public place is not the best for every person. I don't let my mother go beyond the local bank drive through and the post office box, because that's where I think um, is, is best for her at this point. And the last one is the hardest one. We're going to lose some people. We may lose them to the disease, but we may lose them because they're just not ready and may never be ready again to be in a public space where people are touching things that they don't know where they've been because it has changed. But the biggest thing that we learned is you can host amazing programs and you can stay within your comfort zone and you can stay within the state and local COVID, gui COVID guidelines that are out there. So we need to hear from you. We wanna know what you feel about this year. We have a couple of questions for you, if you or a question for you about COVID-19. How comfortable are you about this summer? There are three options. Are you good? Uh, are you able to speak it out? Looks like we have just about half of our, our people in um, responding to our poll. There will be two more polls like this um, throughout our workshop this morning, um, just to give us a little bit of working on. I'm comfortable. A little bit of idea of how you're. Yeah, working. that's what I did. We know that if we could meet with you in person, we would be able to have those those conversations either in small groups or just as you just as you come in the door, but. Um, uh, the, your poll results are completely anonymous. We don't know who um, 
has responded to those. And, um, but it's just a little bit of us to kind of guide. Um, this is also going to help uh, Diane and I as we look to visit summer library programs this summer. Can we get to? We hope so, but they have to be ready to have them for us to go somewhere. It's true. So um, as we're finishing this up, uh, just to let you know that CKLS um, consultants are now um, able to be on the road. Um, some of us have been a little hesitant, but we're getting braver. And um, the only thing that would prevent us is if we have an internal COVID positive case, everybody comes off the road for the length of that, that quarantine and that illness. So um, that could happen at any moment. Um, right now, the CKLS staff is all healthy and um, we're ready to serve. All right. It looks like 79% um, um, of the people are comfortable and they're ready. Um, and that 19% um, are not quite ready to program. And, and I'm not surprised by that number at all. And then um, we do have the respondent of one person that um, just is not comfortable working in the library. And, and that is also not a surprise. That's okay. And it's okay. Um, it's the right it's, answer for it's you. It's okay. It's the right answer for you. We have something of a question in chat. Amy from um, was wondering about your thoughts on a hybrid program, both remote and maybe some outdoor activities. She says she's just a curious crustacean. <laughs> okay, well, our curious crustacean is going to have that question answered here in just a few minutes if she can hold out. Uh, but we will definitely get to um, how to how to mesh those programs together because I would anticipate that's the direction many of our libraries will have to go. So, all right. Mary Beth, we're going to go ahead a couple of screens. This year's collaborative summer library program theme is Tales and Tales. Um, the collaborative summer library program has. Um, a variety of components. One of those, and the most important of those, is your manual. That is where your answers are. Um, all of the activities and the content that you see from today are not from this manual <laughs> because Diane and I want to give you more than what was here. You have that access. If you cannot find your access to your online manual, we can keep a copy of that here. Just give me a call and we'll share that with you over the phone. You should have received your manual in your chosen format, whether that was print like Diane had in her hand or on a uh, USB drive. And then any version of the manual that is purchased for you has an online content option. So you can access it from anywhere and multiple people from a single building can access it with that code. Um, one of the other parts is the CSLP catalog, which contains information for incentives and also your print materials like your posters and things. We hope that all of our CKLS libraries that are joining us today have already received their print materials. If for some reason they are sitting in quarantine or have not arrived, please call Diane um, within the next week or so so we can figure out where those materials may have uh, wandered to. So Diane is scooting behind me. Okay, so um, the uh, Collaborative Summer Library Program does require you to have a login if you're going to access the manual. And the first thing it'll ask you when you um, connect to that page is to um, uh, abide by the user agreements. Those agreements have been laxed a little bit. You're able to keep up your uh, materials longer, use them longer, because the collaborative owns its own content. Okay. It's no longer associated with Demco. Questions? So. We have a year's worth of cool stuff in the book that Diane showed you, but you also have a year's worth of stuff still sitting on your shelves or on a disc somewhere. The Pause Clause Scales and Tales Collaborative Summer Library Program Manual from 2006 is filled with a ton of great ideas. You see all those, those um, post-it flags? Those are things that we've pulled out and shared. Um, if you locate our um, information on our Google Drive, We've pulled out our favorite pages out of that manual for you all. And we want to show you um, one of the activities that was one of my favorites the year I did that. So 
This is one of those learn by doing activities in your packet today. And if you haven't received your packet yet, um, if you registered before the 17th, your packet is on a courier somewhere. Um, but there was a snow day or two, so it might not have reached you yet. Um, it came in a in a um, green uh, turtle bag. Like that saw earlier. <laughs> and, um, so one of the activities that's in that that packet is this old McDonald uh, mobile pie, which is great. So when I did this in 2006, I increased all the pages. I stuck them onto paper plates. I thought this was a great idea. Well, then I got smart this year as I was doing this. I'm like, well, why am I doing all these steps? Because you can just stick them together with paper clips and not have the extra step. <laughs> and so this would be a great take and aid activity if you're in the world of virtual. Um, send the, the copies home. They can either cut them out or you can do the work ahead of time if you have that time. But it's just paper, clay, paper clips, um, crayons, and um, the paper examples for, for McDonald's. And kids can put them together in any order they choose. So don't look just at this current manual. Um, look at the plethora of information that's out there. Facebook has three different collaborative summer library program pages, the official pages and two others that a couple of my colleagues from um, around the US have created and they're just filling them with tons of ideas. Okay, so we're gonna talk about books. Okay, let's talk about books. You should do your book first. Okay, it's not like books. It's actually a book from the Great Bend Public Library and it's overdue. <laughs> Actual size. This is one of my favorite books. I love this book. So much so that my boss gave me permission to make actual size. The shark and the Goliath spider. These are all laminated. These are not really straight out of the book, but it did help. The ostrich. And of course, the gorilla hand. Am I on the camera? <laughs> oh, where does it go? Comparison. These are laminated. Um, I am going to catalog them so they will be available for checkout. I'm eating my mask. Um, and I also found a website which won't let me. I can't. I can't copy this and send it to you, but I can share the the um, website with you. But it's a math um, unit on using the book actual size. That book is by Steve Jenkins, and you're going to hear his name a couple of times today. If you're looking for great animal stuff, he will like the winner. The other giant book is um, Life Size Zoo and Life Size Aquarium. And I think there's Life Size Dinosaurs, but it has beautiful, real pictures in it of the giraffe. Some of these are in your libraries. Look, oh, it's so big. So um, those are the ones I love, love, love. And the author's last name, which I'm going to butcher, so I'm just going to spell for you, is K-O-M-I-Y-A. Life Size Aquarium, Life Size Zoo, and um, Life Size Dinosaur. Is it and Life Size Dinosaur, so you have other options. They, of course, will not fit on your standard shelf, but they're completely worth having in your library. Bigger than my head. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, Steve Jenkins, if you're looking for a comprehensive animal encyclopedia and you don't have um, you don't have three hundred dollars for a set from Grolier or Scholastic, but you're looking for something comprehensive, this is a winner. And this is just a couple of years old. I was gonna say and it asks a lot of it asks a lot of did you know kinds of questions. So yeah. Um, a couple of things that I just just read and fell in love with. Um, I, I uh, this um, series called Heartwood Hotel by Callie George. 
um, a perfect um, second and third grade reader. They're all right around 120 pages long. I happened to borrow these from the Stockton Public Library. I'd read the fourth one and went back and read the first three. Sweet little story about these animals who truly live in a, a hotel that's made out of a tree. And a skunk and a mouse are best friends in it. The badger owns the place. It's just adorable, but they do. Uh, it does have some ecological messages. There's one that is, um, has a flood. And the last one, um, there is a fire in the forest. Um, and that's where we are, chapter or book number four. So I don't know what's going to happen next. And I discovered this one yesterday and read it last night. It's a series called Good Dog by... By um, Higgins, H I G G I N S. Uh, in this set, um, these are these are uh, as simple as Junie B. Jones, but they have over a hundred pages. So for a child who needs a longer book for a book report um, or wants something that feels like a big kid's book, Good Dog might be it. Um, they are highly illustrated with the cutest pictures. In this, the uh, that. The dog tells the story from his point of view, which is just so much fun because he talks about his human parents, his mom and his dad, and he talks about his human sister and brother. And he doesn't understand why the more he plays with his sister and brother, he, he, they throw the stick and he brings it back and he thinks sticks are the best thing and he doesn't understand why they don't like him so much that they keep throwing them away. But in this story, he loses his, um, his tag and he's... Uh, he feels like he doesn't have a home because he no longer has his tag, but he uh, gets the rest of the farm animals to help him find it. So there are four of these out now. Um, and this I think is a brand new series. So something to add to your, your have to read bookshelf. Hey, Patty, there's a question in chat. Sure. There's been a lot of factual animals, but would it be appropriate to add in some fantastical mythical animals too? Yes, absolutely. Does it have a tail? Or is there a story written about it? Anything goes. What, wherever you feel like you could do this, many people did not have a chance to use all of their dragon and unicorn stuff last year that they planned. Here's an opportunity to pull it out and use it that, that didn't get used before. Um, there, there are no rules. It's wherever you're comfortable with it. Um, we, we're gonna show a couple of things that are, that are true life, but we're also gonna show you a lot more things of animals that talk and, I'm pretty sure that most gorillas don't talk. This is Gladys goes out once, by the way. Great story time books about food. Because <laughs> I like story time books about food. Okay, Diane, show them the cool things that you made. Which one is the top shelf? Monkey. <coughs> you have it to carry. Monkey face is over there. Monkey face. Okay, so a lot of times in my job, and um, Patty will say, oh, this is really cool. And then I just make it <laughs> because that's what I do. So some of you may remember this story. It's been around forever. Um, Monkey Face by Mark Brown, where the little girl makes a mask, the little person makes a mask at school and it's supposed to be a monkey, but then everybody comes along and says, but if you add this, it'll be better. And if you add this, it'll be better. And you end up with um, this monstrosity. But when you take, when the child takes it home to mom, mom says it's perfect just the way it is. Um, fun little story. Um, this I made, this will be in the catalog if it's not already. And I don't really remember for sure. <laughs> so, because there's that. And Mother's Day is a hard theme to find a story for. Monkey Face is kind of that go-to for uh, Mother's Day. All of the pieces come off, you put them on as the story. And that would be an easy one for uh, to take this as, as patterns and to, to have children make their own monkey faces yes. out of paper. You wouldn't have to use felt, but so you can you can adapt. Let's do about some cats. Yeah. We have a cat. If you've never heard of this story, it's called Cat's Colors uh -huh. by Arlie Anderson. Diane's getting her stuff ready. Does she have a little? 
and then a little cat. You'll see that there have been two images from this story that have been uh, printed off and laminated. That meets the requirement of things that you can borrow from a book for library purposes only. So I'm going to read the story, and Diane's going to uh, going to make the magic for you. Um, one of the neat things about this story was a couple of months ago, the uh, publisher Chad's Play offered this as a free story walk that you could print out and put in your library or in the yard of your library. Cat colors. It was cloudy outside. Cat was doing gray day things. Then she had an idea. Ding! It was time to collect some colors. Bing! Good job, thanks. <laughs> she looked at the green feeling of leaves. Better turn it around. I think that's probably close. She breathes in the red smell of the roses. Well, my markers aren't working through. <laughs> Journey on. Cat reflected on the blue pond. Oops. She noticed a flutter of purple on a branch. Wait a minute. <laughs> She's worried about getting it to match the picture. It's not wrong. Because I normally, when I do this, I have a child doing this part for me. <laughs> As the sun set, Cat took in the orange light. <laughs> Later, she gazed at the sparkling black cosmos. My flap's not working very well either. I just checked these yesterday. She found a cozy sleeping spot under the yellow moon. There she is. Sleepy <sighs> cat finds a place to hide and rest. It's morning. Cat! 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 Oh, cat! And there she is with all of her colorful kittens. And that is Cat's Colors by Arlie Anderson. Now that was a simple way to bring a book to life. I did have a helper. Um, when I've done this before, activities like this, I put it right on the, the board behind me and I might give um, several children each one color and they have to listen for their color and come up and draw a dot. There's no right or wrong answer. She was worried about getting it to match the picture. <laughs> because I won't tell you why. Because <laughs> Diane and I are very different. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, let's do this. And she's like, oh, let's do this very ordered and <laughs> not always. <laughs> not always. Um, just a few others we just want to run by you and tell you about. Great old book that might be on your shelf somewhere. Um, a series of animal books by Bernard Most. This is Cockadoodle Moo. Goldfish Story, Not Norman by Kelly Bennett. This is a middle 2000s book. Kid wants a goldfish and a kid wants a pet and he gets a goldfish and he is not happy because he doesn't want Norman, but woohoo. Um, Bark George, if you've not booked Bark George in your story time repertoire, it needs to be there. Here's an opportunity for kids to make silly animal sounds. And this is one of those that should have kids rolling on the floor laughing. We mentioned Steve Jenkins before. Here's Look Again by Steve Jenkins. 
That's what do you see? And then you look at the picture again and it's something completely different. And what do you do if you work in the zoo? Also with Steve Jenkins. And um, most of his pictures are paper cut um, illustrations, which are great. The other one you should all have on yourselves is Jeff Bezos. Dog's Colorful Day. This was a um, Kansas Reach to Preschoolers um, several years ago. I don't remember. And again, I've made a final board out of it story, and this is in the catalog. Um, hey, Dom. Hey, Dom. I think we have dinosaurs. That is from a book called The Iguana Brothers. By Tony Johnston. And also in that kit, please come together as a kit from Sikelis's checkout collection. I want an iguana. And that's by um, Karen Kaufman Orloff and David Catro. You might recognize him as the illustrator for the Arts on Parade. No, Arts Be Creative year we did for Summer Library in 2008. So I have no idea where I got that from, but it just came to me. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about some scratch. Oh, 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 you want to show them? Yeah. Inside your um, packet that you got, got a bag of crafts. Most of this will be used this afternoon. But inside there is a shower curtain ring. Want to get that out of your packet? And there's also a, an animal. Easter egg that we whoops that is okay that we that's in there so a shower curtain ring and an animal Easter egg that's what we're going to be using so inside the egg oh Patty bought like a ton of these last year at Easter from Dollar Tree Dollar Tree. We haven't looked yet to see if they're out yet, but we've been doing some other things. So inside your egg, there's some pony beads. Coolest little fidget. Unhook, whoa, whoa. <laughs> unhook, unhook your um, shower curtain ring and put your pony beads on it. See how much easier is that? Close it up. You've got your fidget for the day. Super easy take home. This would be appropriate for fidgeting at a CKLS workshop. Yes, and so we know how that is. So um, the materials will be available for you to make one when you come to visit us the next time. Uh, before we leave the uh, book list information, there is a book list included with your packet and also on the Google Drive. It's the titles that we pulled together. I also um, spoke with my counterpart in Nebraska, and so there is a page in there um, from the Nebraska Library Commission by Sally Snyder, and she does a wonderful video. It's about an hour and 15 minutes long, and she talks about each one of the books that she um, shares in her video um, are all on this book list. So you have two wonderful book lists to work from. Links and in the chat. Links in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, crafty time. Right. Hey, play it. <laughs> okay, there's some things that Diane does just because I say it would be awesome. I don't know why I love this so much. Looking. He's looking this way, and he's looking that way. Hey, Diane, what do you have? I have a koala that looks at Patty a lot of times. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, I found it I a messaged, lot. I messaged it to her and she's like, okay. So again, Patty and Diane come at things in a different way. I've done this activity before. This is this is what the back looks like. Piece of black paper that has the eyeball stuck to it. But you do have to use the pattern or make your own because the eyeballs have to be have to match the spacing. Because I'm just like, like if we just make a bunch of pages of eyeballs. Well, we can't. Otherwise, they end up looking like drunk animals. <laughs> <laughs> That's not appropriate. <laughs> 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 so, uh, 
That's a ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like that monkey just kind of did. So did I hold it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this one, that one, and then the other one. Okay. I leave that in Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I don't always follow down Patty's path <laughs> and she loses me. <laughs> okay, so one day I was like, okay, draw the eyeballs, draw the beak. And then I came up with this um, funky owl. Now, was, was not totally my idea. I did look at a picture on Pinterest and go, I can do that. Put a little crack. Now, Earlier this year, um, was this after we came back or was this before we got sent home that we did the birds? So that we came back. Okay. Um, I gave everybody this page, this page. I cannot get used to working with this camera. Um, and said, draw me a bird. So we had those up in the hallway. Well, we sent everybody's home. So we didn't have any examples to show you, but I will just show you a little something. This is Patty's version. This is my version. <laughs> Two very different birds, just like us. <laughs> Well, I have one bird that looks like her. See, this one's just a this one's just a little owl. I did my homework on Sunday night, <laughs> and then she's got one that's got a little bit of wild hair to it. Not much. I was inspired by your your ostrich. <laughs> He's uncrossed the ostrich from me. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a cat bird. <laughs> I was doing my homework every day, every single day. I put up with it. So, you all know Flats family. He's probably sitting on your bookshelf. Flats family has been all over the world and then some. Uh, oh, a few years ago, people started taking and make a little creature and hiding it in the library for patrons to find when they came to visit. And then last year when we went virtual, I got a lot of messages about um, the library mascot was taking a trip and they would send out a place for you to make a copy and then um, taking places and take pictures. So I couldn't even tell you where for sure almost the chicken came from, but he GCPL, I don't know where that is. I know it's not Kansas. So I made my own almost the chicken and I uh, took pictures of him and sent him back to the library. And so he got to visit Kansas. I think he might be from Ohio. I'm not sure, but you can take any creature. Um, Hayes Public did this with Tilly the Penguin. You can get those images, um, free images off the internet, but the place where kids might come with come up with them from is a regular old coloring book, Dollar Tree coloring book, but had some awesome different animals that you might let the kids color and decorate your library with because you don't need to spend money um, more than a buck because kids can do your decorating for you. But this might be a way for your library mascot to travel the world and you'll find lots of library people that are willing to do this for you. And you might be able to get one, in this case, a chicken from the entire United States. And they didn't, the kids didn't have to go anywhere, but it's a good way to um, show them that, you know, in, okay, the teacher to me is gonna come out. Um, in, when we teach social studies to kids with the very little, we start off with ourselves, and then we go to our family and then we get to our, um, our group around us, which might be daycare. In some cases, it's the library. And then we keep getting that community bigger. You know, it includes church and then later it's school. And then we eventually move to city, state and country and then around the world. Well, this is a good way for to teach that concept of, of um, how a child fits in a world with something super fun. And it's always fun to get mail. So you might even get some of the people who actually send um, mail back to the library for a specific child. So um, flat family is always fun. Included in your packet is a tell and draw. And also on the Google Drive, we have about 10 of them on there for you. Um, it happens to be a tell and draw for a um, Cecil the Curious pet. 
and Cecil happens to meet a butterfly. This is from a book older than I am. This is called Tell and Draw Stories by Margaret Olson. There are three different versions, um, Tell and Draw, More Tell and Draw, and even more Tell and Draw. Um, and we have copies of all of those books available in um, the uh, C.K. Lewis private collection. Call us and we'll help you out with those because they, they can't travel because they fall apart, but they are reproducible. And some of those are available for you in Drive. Show them fingerprints. Some of you know Ed Emberley. Um, he does things with cool um, drawing, teaching you how to draw. Man, words. <laughs> I have to use words. Um, this one happens to be his fingerprint book. And, but I think we put this in, did we put this on the oh, it's on the drive. Um, it is fingerprints and it's all animals. So um, fun. My, my little brain says can be these easily. A hint, you don't have to have ink pads. So if you're gonna do this as a take and make, you don't have to have ink pads. Children can use washable markers, color the pads of their fingers and do their prints there. And the only thing we have to teach them is to start with light to dark colors because eventually your fingerprints are all going to be black. But you start with yellow and go um, all the way back to navy blue or black. I said uh, it was blue. Um, this piece of paper has been sitting on my desk since the year we did aliens because Diane had made her own aliens. And oh, I just, I mean, this piece of paper, it, she made a bird, an alien, and some birds, and then some, I think that's a dragonfly. I think it's. Yes, it was a dragonfly. And then also in the drive is examples of um, how to make animals out of handprints and feet prints. So if you're brave and you want to go even more, that might be a fun take home activity for parents. <laughs> there you go. Virtual programming there you is go. the way to go. That would be it. And then also in your packet is the Tell and Draw is um, roll a dice games. Great activity for um, for uh, virtual packaging um, for take and makes. So we actually did one of those at a, one of our meetings. We did, um, I believe we built a ghost. Yeah, okay. That's what it was. Well done. We're gonna move ahead because we have another poll to share with you. Um, this is gonna talk about what kind of programming that you're doing and now we'll address that. What will we do next? What are your program plans for summer 2021? Please respond to the poll. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Every day. And, and, or, uh, Gail had a plan for the staff to sing a song for all of you uh, but because we attempted happy birthday when one of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded more like a round, but it was not a very good sound. It was bad. Everyone's a music critic. <laughs> no, it was bad. Well, you know. Just admit it, Mary Beth. <laughs> we do have a couple of comments in the chat. Um, Amy uh, Kenyon uh, has some books that always make animal books that always make the kids laugh. Interrupting Chicken by David Stein, oh. The Little Mole Who Knew It Was None of His Business by Werner Holz uh, Werner Holsworth. Did I say that right? Yeah. And um, the link for the handouts is in the chat. The workshop is being recorded, and Crystal Fullerton. So she uses paint on pieces of damp sponge to make my own fingerprint pads for story time. Oh, nice. Yay. Nice. And Wonderful see, idea. See, we're just sitting on this other side, but it's way, there's way more learning that happens when you can all sit together and share ideas. So that is great. We're going to write that one down and share it out with our, with our notes. Thank you for sharing that, Crystal. And, um, and Liz, did you get those names of those books in the chat so we can find them later too? They are in the chat and we will save the chat. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, looks like we're about two thirds of the way through. Looks like um, 
One third of our attendees have said that they're going to do all in person programming. 15% uh, um, outdoor only of in person. 11% um, all virtual. And, and that would, um, does connect to the earlier question. I'm really not comfortable either in the library or certainly not comfortable with the program. And then the not surprising answer is a combination of in person and virtual. So I bet you if I ask the question for all of you to raise your hand if you really love virtual programming, I already know what that answer is going to be because uh, I'm getting some thumbs down, <laughs> thumbs down in my in my uh, audience here today. And um, yes, um, it is not the same. You don't you're not able to connect with your readers or your patron, and you you feel like you're on stage, but there's nobody to play off of. And you know, Diane and I and our silly joke telling that is just a, a part of how we. Cool. How we cope. There we go. That's a good word. And so, if you're a one person library and you're really feeling this most because you know you, you you have a limited number of patrons, but if your doors aren't open or if you're certainly not open to programming, it's, it's got to be very difficult. So, if I were a practicing librarian like all of you, the program that I would be writing would be half outdoor and half virtual. I probably would be living in the world of planning for take and makes. If it happened to be a good week and I was able, able to give that packet to them there, that's great. But I would be fully prepared for them to have to come pick up packets because we know we've watched the curves go. Right now in Kansas, we seem to be on the downward trend and that's, that's great. The numbers are down, um, the hospitalizations and the deaths are down. It's, it's part of the reality, but we've watched it go like this. And from one day to the next, your community is completely healthy. And the next day, the majority of it is not. And so it's, it's probably best that you look at what can I do? How can I make this virtual and still make it fun? Last year, I pleaded with all of you to take a minute or two to make a video, even if that video is just to say hello and to connect with your families that lets them know that you're okay and that you're well and that you're concerned about all of them, but this isn't working for, for your community at that point, and that's okay. That video is, is a connection. It doesn't have to replace what you're doing. In, <clears throat> excuse me, in some of the links that we're gonna share, you've got, um, you've got links to things that you can do. You've got links to, links to stories um, that you can share, share that way. And it might just be an introduction first, you know, that's just, just to get on there. Hey, it's Miss Patty. I miss all of you. Hey, hang around and follow the link in the chat because that's going to be where your stories are going to be today. Um, or take the time to go through and show how to make the craft. Doesn't have to take long if everything's in your take and make bag. Hey, Diane, show them where this came from. It's a pig. <laughs> It's a duck, and it was made by one of our staff members who was at home, saw these cute little yogurt It's container. a yogurt container. <laughs> Took the materials that she had at home and brought these back for us to show all of you. Now, the materials that she had at home, she didn't have a whole bunch of construction paper and a whole bunch of colored markers because she doesn't have a whole bunch of children in her house. But she worked it out in order for us to be able to show you a really cool thing from recycled materials that she used from her home. But if you take the two minutes to make that video and show them how, for a child, it might be that couple of minutes of school. Um, it also might be that connection with their, with their library person. And so um, figure your best ways to reach out. That might be that video. It might be you're standing on the in the, the school um, summer lunch line and being able to connect by passing out bags in that manner. It might be that's the way that they can see you, but it's still keeping you and your community safe. If you're among those that aren't ready, don't feel bad about it. Explain it to your community that at this time, the library isn't ready to be open to visitors or the library isn't ready to be open to visitors or program. 
they understand, they love you, and they want you to be well and comfortable with them um, visiting again. And that's going to happen. You just have to be patient. We hopefully, do have. A hopefully, twenty twenty two will look a whole lot different. Yes, Liz. Uh, we have a comment in the chat along those lines um, from Port Library. They say that they miss the kids and the kids miss the library um, and the programs. And I've been asked by the kids when they can come back because they miss the program so much. And so how can, how can you meet in the middle in that case? It might be stories on the lawn and every child has a carpet shape that they sit on or a piece of paper if it has to be that's that the rock a rock is sitting on top of whatever it is this has to be your spot in, for, in order for us to be together yep. she's uh they say that they're having some local vets this summer helping to do the programming and talk about animal care as yes. uh so that's an idea we've got some other partnership opportunities here i'm um, <laughs> just headed next so miss diane Yes, ma'am. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> kick it up a notch. Oh boy. <laughs> you got your paper? Oh, yeah. This is from a book called Joyful Noise, Poems for Two Voices by Paul Fleischman. And this book won the Newberry in, I believe, 1986. The name of this poem is called Book Lice. Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. I was born in a fine old edition of Schiller. Well, I started life in a private eye thriller. We're, We're book, book lice, lice who dwell, dwell in these, these dusty bookshelves. Bookshelves. Book, book <laughs> Later, I lodged in Scott's work, volume 50. Well, I passed my youth in an Agatha Christie. We're, We're book, book lice, lice attached, attached despite contrasting facts. He fell down seven shelves where we happen to meet. We're book lice who chew on the book binding glue. We honeymooned in an old guidebook on Greece. I miss Conan Doyle. I he pined for his peeps. We're book lice, fine mates despite different tastes. So we set up our home inside Rosé's thesaurus. Not far from my mysteries close to his Horace, where We're book lice adoring, adoring despite her loud song. <laughs> and there we've resided, and there will remain. He nearby his Shakespeare, I near my Spillane. We're book, book loving book lice, plain proof to, of the fact, which I'm certain I re read in a book some months back, that, that opposites often are known, known to attract. attract. <laughs> and that is book life. Well, it's definitely Patty and I. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, that's, um, that's one of those that there's, I'm gonna be real honest, there's not a whole lot of poetry that I'm gonna say should be on your shelf. This is one of those um, that should be on your shelf. And this is when you have that junior high or high school kid who needs to do a, a presentation for forensics or for speech. There you go. This is a good one to send them to. The other thing you can send them to is great picture books. We have a comment about that book in chat. Uh, Frank Carlson says it was also on the William Allen White Master List. Oh, okay. Thank you, awesome. Alice. Thank you. That's probably where I first discovered it was that William Allen White List. Hoisington says that they have a local dog trainer coming in. She trains service dogs, so they're super excited. And Haley says, after you're reading the book lice book, does anyone else feel itchy now? Yes. <laughs> yes, but I woke up that way. <laughs> you know, and maybe maybe that's not, maybe book lice isn't the one that the librarians like, but you have all kinds of other creatures. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of, there's <laughs> mayflies. There's mayflies. Okay, Mary Beth, can you scoot our PowerPoint towards the links page, please? Okay. Amy says we're having a local wildlife biologist come in. Good job, Amy. Hang I on, I didn't like that. Yep. Let me see if I can get this up. Technical difficulties. There we go. Well, Mary Beth's pulling up the links page. Um, 
The Google Drive is filled with a bunch of links by different pages. So make sure you tab through the Excel documents that you find. Um, and then we also included in the packet um, some of the pages that we tend to go uh, tend to like the best and um, some of our go-to places. So here we go. Here on the links page, I'm going to have uh, Mary Beth click on a couple of these. Uh, is there audio? Yes. Let me do one thing real quick. Okay. Um, this um, the first one is whose tail? It is. There's a series of videos that are about 30 seconds long. That face that is usually covered by her phone has finally made an appearance. Whose tail? Whose tail? Whose tail? Whose tail is it? Whose tail? Whose tail? Whose tail is it? Here we go. Whose tail? Monkey. It's a monkey. Whose tail? Lobster. It's a lobster. It's a goat. It's a horse. <laughs> whose tail? Whose tail? Whose tail? Is um, that that is about a minute and thirty second long video. But that same company, which happens to be Maple Leaf Learning, has whose tail? Whose mouth? Whose ears? Whose feet? And whose eyes? New activity for each week. Right back, can you click on the one that says animals and their tails? <clears throat> and this one is the live animal version. Kind of a similar activity. But these would be great links that you can share out. Uh, a new activity each week, a couple of minutes, but I bet that they would get a lot of attention. This one's a little bit longer. Animals and their tails. Animals come in all different shapes and sizes. And so do their tails. Have you ever wondered what animals use their tails for? <laughs> what does a dog use its tail for? A dog uses its tail to show how it's feeling. What does a scorpion use its tail for? Thingy. A scorpion uses its tail as a weapon. What does a shark use its tail for? A shark uses its tail to help it move. Is this a copyright violation if we use the videos in our story time presentation? No, it is not. You are linking out to the original location of the video. In this case, this might this might be if they use it playing during their story time. Is that the question? Yes, the video within a video. Yes. They are going to show this during their story time. That is that is still acceptable because you're linking out to the location where the video lives. I'm not taking this video and um, making it and presenting it as my own. I'm going out to Maple Leaf Running to show the Who's Tail video. And you okay. saw the commercial that appeared. Kids are used to seeing those commercials already. They know that they have to wait 15 or 30 seconds. Um, we've all learned that. And so um, that's um, but you may link to those activities um, and those are things that you could also send out and that's completely valid and we have um several links in the um, google drive for you to to share out um we have so much stuff i have, I have a lot of papers here for you I'm running, I'm running close on time so um that um when you look at the, wow. the google drive you're going to find just a ton of great links of things that you can borrow but also remember there's a ton of opportunities right now as of now at june 1st there's still those those um publisher permissions are still available but those permissions will continue to 
fall off as people get well and as um, as the um, providing for the school children, because that's where the permissions originally came from, uh, providing for the school children uh, moves on. So we're going to move on to stuff to buy. Hey, Diane, did you find some stuff to buy? I did find some stuff to buy. Patty says yes. <laughs> I'm just going to start on the top. Okay. Our shower curtain rings. We purchased through Amazon. There are a hundred in this bag, and we paid nicely under ten dollars for a hundred of them. All of these, all this information is in the drive with the link directly to Amazon for most of these products. Um, we haven't got a chance to use this because we're not in person, but we found. Animal yoga in several, um, I mean, in two different, two different styles, and there are different levels in each box. And um, there are 32 cards in those. So, being so we didn't get to use them, somebody will get to win those. It's a valuable prize. Woo! Sticker googly eyes from Amazon. We'll use those this afternoon. Um, there's a thousand pairs of eyes on that roll for six hundred ninety-nine dollars. Oh, how about six dollars? <laughs> I was like, that's not really a deal. Expensive eyes, <laughs> really expensive eyes. <laughs> Other stuff we didn't get to use because we did not decorate a room. Um, and these will all be given out as props, uh, prizes, not props. Um, these are uh, wall decorations. Cut them out, take them to the wall. And where did the yoga cards come from? On um, the tree. Dollar Tree. Thank you. Um, our background behind us and these plastic tablecloths were another Amazon purchase. Five tablecloths, $16. And they're huge. They're, they're big tablecloths. Thank you. Um, photo props. There's lots of jungle animals. We haven't even opened them. Somebody will get it for a prize. They're the ones with the sticks. Yes. Uh, um, 12 pieces for 826. And another um, cardboard cutout decor that did not get opened. <laughs> 12 pieces um, for $10. Yeah. So that was another Amazon order. Um, the mask that Michael had on this morning, the Arctic Fox. Amazon correct. Amazon. This is the best set of little kids masks. There are sorry, um, every little animal that you can think of. There's a warthog. A warthog. 24 kid size masks that will fit Michael. Um, for <laughs> yeah. about $14. Okay. Um, and the hat that you've seen us wear um, at different um, library um, online meetings, um, that was an Amazon hat for $14, and no doubt one of us will be wearing that later today. Um, um, all of those things that we purchased are in a um, document for you in the Google Drive. We have a couple comments in the chat. Um, Andy? Michener mentioned that the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism is happy to do presentations on animals. Yes. Um, he says he remembers them as a kid and they were always fun. We answered the copyright and we answered the yoga card question. Um, Michael says that this afternoon is the idea swap. So please send topics for this afternoon's large group discussion in the chat. If you wish to remain, remain anonymous, please send them to Michael through the private chat. Okay, this is the year of partnership opportunities and fairly free and inexpensive partnership opportunities. My best is you'll scoot ahead one page. You have already shared some of the amazing things that you're doing. We're going to capture that chat and share all of that out. Of course, you start with your local humane society or animal shelter uh, through your county. Um, a program that you might never not have heard me talk about before was 4-H members and or county fair. 4-H members need a place to practice showing animals. It is so much fun when they bring baby goats to the library. Now, <laughs> what does your library policy say about animals in the library? 
if animals are not allowed, you need that line somewhere that says, except for library programs, animals are not allowed in libraries. So that's one of those policy pieces that you might need to modify before you get to the summer yet. Um, a list of some of those local organizations, including Department of Wildlife and Parks and our local Kansas wetlands um, does appear on this list. The wetlands did send their new, uh, their new um, flyer to us and that will be in your, in your box. And then the next screen is, is animal um, cameras and videos that you might find from some of our zoos. And so um, you'll find links to all of those in the chat. Meredith, can you go ahead one screen for me, please? At the very bottom of this screen, you'll see something that says Parade Magazine 25, less, 25 Best Live Cameras to Watch. That takes you to a lot of these links on this list. And then at the that last line there, Ultimate Guide to Virtual, Re Virtual Museum Resources is a seven page document filled with um, ideas for e-learning, virtual programs, links to take classes, and a whole bunch of stuff just for kids and families. So you are not limited by what's next door because we have the magic of the internet and we can share out the link to the Cincinnati Zoo Cam or to the Smithsonian Panda Cam. The Penguin Cam at Shed Aquarium to me is the absolute best that it, um, Kansas City Zoo's Penguin Cam rivals it. So those are some of my favorites there. Um, one of the things included in your packet for CTLS libraries is um, information about the outdoor movie showings that are available through Swank this summer. And um, I have listed um, titles straight from that list of available movies that fit this year's Tales and Tales theme. Okay. Now to the hard part. Mary Beth and Gail, this is where you're going to have to step up and step in. We're going to talk about the evaluation. In your uh, packet, there is a copy of the current evaluation. I'm going to show you a couple of slides and then we're going to go back to chat here. <coughs> Accurate record keeping is essential um, for funding. You have to complete your state annual survey and you have to complete your system grant questionnaire to be available, um, eligible for that funding. However, CKL has not has changed its status on what's uh, available to count. <coughs> for those of you visiting us from other systems today, um, this may surprise you, but when we shut down, we didn't know what else to tell anyone. And so at CKLS, our vision has not changed. You do the program, you count it, and you figure out somewhere that it fits on the state survey. We have guided our librarians to the way that they fit on the state annual survey <coughs> and into your um, summer library program evaluation. The key is consistency. We say count everybody at everything. For uh, archived events, they count as one. Um, virtual events, you count the best you can because you don't know everybody that's in the room. Just like today, we don't know that everybody that's out there. And, um, but as far as your in-person, you already know how to count that and where that goes on the state annual survey. If you're a CKLS librarian and you're having trouble when it comes time to fill out that survey, you call Mary Beth. If you are in another system, <coughs> each one of your systems has a contact person for that survey. And you can also contact the state library and contact Alice Smith and she'll guide you through that process. Gail, have anything to add to the evaluation comments? I do. Um, CKLS librarians, you know that the um, summer library program evaluation is a must do. The reason is because this is this workshop. No, not the workshop. Your print materials that you receive, your manuals that you receive are funded from a grant through IMLS. That is the federal agency that serves libraries and museums. And because it is federally funded, there are a lot of requirements to receive that money and to keep receiving it in future years. When you fill out your evaluation, when you track visitors and number of programs accurately, 
as accurately as you can be and you fill out that information that is what helps all kansas libraries qualify for the grant next year so that we can continue to receive these materials at no cost to your library that is not how it is in other states we are very lucky and let's keep that luck going by filling out the evaluation the three things that that inls grant funds are manuals membership to cslp Got and the materials one. the print materials that you received and so that includes your bookmarks your posters your reading charts your doorknob hangers and something else I know there's something else. There's there's something there's something right else. Now, it's at a loss to me. Uh, but so um, filling out that evaluation is is necessary and is required from from uh, every library across every public library across the state. But um, it's it's the how you count is the issue that that changes from one place to another. If you have a question, call and speak with Mary Beth or with me, and we'll be glad to help guide you through that process. The key is. Do it the same from year to year and from place to place. So if you know that you're taking a leave of absence from your library, leave notes on how to count. 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 <laughs> so several years ago, CKLS provided each library a um, counter with the clicker. If you're a new librarian, and you haven't you haven't seen this you have no idea where it is contact me so we can get you a, a new one but these are handy it's a you know people walk in the door um outside you know that it, it's just very handy to have on a i know great bend has theirs on lanyards that the girls wear and click away so um i can catch that chat we got a couple of comments. Okay. Um, Cortland shares that they are going to ask their FFA teacher to bring her goats in for an or outdoor program. Mm -hmm. So baby goats. Yeah. Um, Michael shared the swank documents that are in the drive. And Amy said she got hers approved yesterday. It was super easy to get uh, for outdoor movies. Yay. Michael Goat went ahead and posted our 1-800 toll-free line for libraries and individuals wanting to talk to you guys. And Becky and Pan at Claflin say, ask, can we show YouTube's video at the community center where we plan to do our SLP so we can social distance? A YouTube video that is out there on the web is acceptable. You cannot show a video from the library that is, that is where that line does not extend to. So that um, the video, um, outdoor video um, situation, that has, still has to be on library grounds. So, and, and you have to fill out the form for them so they, they, they know that you're doing it correctly and you're right. going to be that. That's the, out, the, um, the movie license covers that, but you still have to, to do that. And that's different than a YouTube video. Yeah. Okay, we, um, maybe that's gonna pull the, the wow the uh, PowerPoint back up. That thing. That thing. That thing for the thingy. For the what's it? Because we want to do one of those things. Because oh, we want to do one of those things. And um, we do have um, one more question for you. And this question is about what you got out of today's workshop. Please be honest. It doesn't help us get better unless you're honest. Again, we don't know who filled out what answer. Right. If we're really bad, we need to know that too. So we don't ever do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and so our boss knows too. Yeah. I would really like to keep my job, but. <laughs> well, you know, we should, we should deal with it. <laughs> we know we have thrown a whole bunch of information at you really, really quickly, and uh, of course we have we have more. So this afternoon, uh, please plan to join us for the idea swap. It truly is your ideas, but we have, we still have some things you haven't seen yet, so those will be available. There will also be a part um, uh, a time period for a full group discussion, and so at that time we're going to ask you to turn your screens on and open up your mics. 
and talk about what's on your mind. If you have topics that you'd like to talk about and you're not comfortable sharing those out, you're welcome to email them to me um, between now and one o'clock. You may put them in the chat or, or send them privately to Michael and he will share those with us this afternoon as well. <coughs> we need to know what you're worried about. We need to know what's on your mind. And this is the opportunity to blow your own horn. So don't be afraid to do that because the, uh, I had a principal once that told me that if you don't blow your own horn now and then, someone's going to come along and throw sand in it. And I never forgot that. And, and maybe that's where what you all see as confidence came from. But if you don't, nobody knows. So um, this is the opportunity. Bring that, that animal book that you love to share at story time or some craft that you've already got ready or, or some idea that you might want to try that you aren't, aren't sure about yet. Bring that this afternoon. So it looks like two thirds of our people have, have um, told us what's going on, um, learned a few new things, almost 50%, um, picked up one or two ideas, which is great. <clears throat> and it's always nice to see the last one. I didn't learn anything, but I had fun. Thank and, you. And, and, <laughs> Thank and you. That's, that's important to us. And it, I mean, it is. It truly is because we miss seeing you all. We really, truly miss seeing you all. And it was, I, I would have loved to have been in the, in the big room and laughing with all of you and carrying on instead. Okay. This is where I'm Before at. Before we go, what kind of an insect is bad at football? I don't know. What kind of an insect is bad at football? A bumblebee. Oh. <laughs> What do you get when you cross a cow with a duck? <laughs> no, <laughs> get no, no, no. Okay, all right. One more. One more. <laughs> Please, somebody guilt cut. Okay. Please. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Oh, I should know. Oh, that. Oh, oh, a pork chop! <laughs> 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 goodbye <laughs> but we've discovered that there's all kinds of ways to say goodbye so go go buffalo see you later alligator take care polar bear and a shake garter snake give me a hug ladybug i can't do that it's oh. COVID. Till then, penguin. <laughs> <Still there>. <laughs> <laughs> included in your packet is all kinds of ways to say goodbye can't stay, Blue Jay. Out the door, dinosaur. Give me a fish, goldfish. Um, we hate to say goodbye, but we hope to see you this afternoon. Next week, if you're not doing anything, at 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, 1.30. One thirty. Sorry. Um, join us for a presentation with Will Stuck, who is uh, the storyteller who did our summer library program for Universal Stories. I believe you remember that he came he's, out. He's just as, about as entertaining as us. Just, just about. <laughs> Pretty close. I think he might be in the room today. I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, so um, join us next week. Um, but we'd rather see you this afternoon as well. So come back for more fun. Uh, Mary Beth is going to put up the screen that has our um, contact information. And we just want to say thank you. We want to tell you that you're awesome. And we had the best time playing with you today. And we hope by chance of chance that next year we get to play together for oceans of possibility. Yes. Thank you all. Have a great day. Um, Diane and I will stay in the room here a few minutes. If somebody needs to chat about something, we'll stay here online for a few minutes. We're going to shut the recording down, however. Um, but we're here if you need it. Thank you so much. You guys rock.